This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos. When you join now, help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Game manager conversations are as old as sports talk about football. What actually makes a quarterback good and what quarterbacks who are seeing success are actually good versus quarterbacks who aren't seeing success that are better. Like if we've had these conversations about quarterbacks for a while, but this clip from Deshaun Watson's podcast reignited this argument a bit amongst Browns fans. Like, I don't need to try to get a lead, even though it's zero zero, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can take these little things, these little little dinks and dunks, and and trickle the the ball down the field. Where I'm being a game manager, I'm not trying to be a game changer and, and be the the superstar that people know I am. I don't need that right now, and I think that that's where I got to continue to tell myself and preach to myself that I need to do that each and every week, not just against the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm gonna just keep it a buck here. Not just from the response of this clip, but from the response that I hear from football fans and Browns fans in general, not saying everybody, but in general, it makes it very clear to me that a lot of football fans don't really understand the game manager versus game changer argument that Cam Newton was bringing up a year ago. And by proxy, I don't think a lot of football fans really understand the quarterback position and quarterback play in general. So this is my attempt to, one, try to explain it, and two, try to understand why it is that a lot of people misunderstand what the term is or the argument just goes in a direction that's not intended every time these terms are brought up. Now, a lot of the reason that we have this issue with people associating game manager with a lesser tier quarterback or lesser tier quarterback play is really simple to anybody who watched football before 2018. We know what game manager used to mean. Um, and game manager was a insult like pre honestly like 2020. Cause like you go back in my stuff in 2018 and 2019, I'm sure I'm using the term game manager as an insult, especially my early shit. Um, uh, but yeah, we used to use the term game manager as a insult. Right. Because there were different tiers of quarterback. This was back where quarterback play styles were a bit more ubiquitous. Right. For the most part, everybody played similarly to how Drew Brees and Peyton Manning and Ben Roethlisberger played. It was pretty ubiquitous, the style. So we didn't really need to describe different styles of quarterback play because there was it was seen as one right way to play that position back in the day. So we only described the levels of play. So there were bums, there were backups, there were starters, there were game managers who were better than starters, but not necessarily franchise guys. And then there were franchise guys. And then there was like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. And that's how we categorize quarterbacks for the longest time. And football fans like me and football fans older than me who have grown up with that term or have been using that term for most of their adult life will, on some level, always have their first reaction to the term game manager be as an insult because that's usually was something thrown at somebody who thought they were a franchise quarterback, but they were a game manager. Now, in the peripheries, of this era, there were guys like Cam Newton and Mike Vick who didn't really fit the mold, but we didn't have vocabulary to describe what exactly those players are. Like if you look at a lot of the discourse around like Mike Vick and especially around early Cam Newton, nobody knew where to put him, right? We didn't know if he was a game manager because like it didn't feel real game managery, but it also didn't feel like a franchise quarterback because he wasn't as polished in the pocket as 
franchise quarterbacks that we're used to. It just we had no term for a dude like Cam Newton and a dude like Mike Vick back in the day. So these guys just kind of lived in their own kind of realm where they weren't really associated with the regular rankings. But as quarterback play got more similar and started to look more like what Cam Newton does, what Mike Vick used to do, as that shift happened, we got new terms and things that might have been meant as insults before have turned into descriptions of a style of play. Tom Brady is somebody who's interesting to watch when it comes to the development of this term and the evolution of the term because Tom Brady during his early years was described as a game manager, right? Somebody who was more of the more their success was more the sum of their parts than them themselves. You know, we kind of just looked at Tom Brady as somebody who had a great situation similar to how we talk about game managers and took advantage of it relatively well, but if he played anywhere else, He wouldn't be that good. And that's kind of what game manager means to a lot of people. And as Tom Brady evolved, somewhat ironically, to shed himself from the game manager title as we knew it, the title of game manager also evolved with them. So now... 20 years later from when we were calling Tom Brady a game manager in 2004, now in 2024, we're still calling Tom Brady a game manager, but we're just saying he's an elite game manager because the term of game manager had evolved since 2004. Because now what a game manager means is somebody who takes care of the football and plays a little bit more of a conservative style. And it's more of a description of a style of play instead of a level of play and that's the important distinction of where we are at today and why so many people get caught up on this whole game changer game manager argument because a lot of us see it as oh the game changers are inherently better than the game managers that's not true you can be a game changer and be bad you can be a game manager and be elite While I understand and am empathetic to people because we have kind of been conditioned to kind of take in football like this, right? Where a game manager is seen as an insult. This is kind of how the audience has been conditioned to think of the term game manager. And like within the last few years, that term has changed. So it takes people a while to catch up with the difference. But I think it's a good change because to associate game manager, um, as not just a style of play, but a level of play is a misunderstanding of the quarterback position in total. And this is an argument that's been out ever since the introduction of the game manager term, ever since we've used the game manager term, especially when we were using it in an exclusively negative light um, in the early to late 2000s, there have always been people who are experts at the quarterback position who have fought back on that description of game manager because they understood the game manager was more of a description of how a quarterback played than how good that quarterback played. When you think of game manager and game changer, it's not levels, right? One's not higher than the other. One's not more preferred than the other. It's a spectrum, not a binary, right? Just because somebody is described as a game manager doesn't mean that they can't be a game changer at points. And just because somebody is described as a game changer doesn't mean that they won't have times where they have to manage the game. If you want a perfect example of this, think about Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is somebody who sits pretty far in the game changer spectrum of quarterback play. He makes insane plays. He throws the ball a million miles per hour, a million yards downfield. He's known for making these incredible plays and pulling things out of nowhere with just his arm talent alone. And if you look at his 2019 playoff run where the Chiefs didn't have a great defense, but they really relied on the offense that they had with Tyreek Hill and a prime Travis Kelsey that 
that description fits what Pat Mahomes was doing in that playoff run for them to win a championship. But if you fast forward to 2023 and you watch what Pat Mahomes was doing in the playoffs, he's not doing the crazy stuff in the playoffs. He's playing a more conservative style of football where he's managing the time of possession and managing having the ball and making sure that they score and slow the game down. If you get where I'm going in 2023, Pat Mahomes realized to win that championship, he needed to game manage, go watch that game versus Baltimore. That's him game managing. Go watch a lot of what he did in that, in that uh, postseason run. He did a lot of game managing. The number one thing I see getting misunderstood when people have this argument about game changers versus game managers and which one is worth a ton of money is I think a lot of people misunderstand what dictates somebody being a game manager or a game changer has a lot less to do about overall athletic ability and a lot more to do about the context that that quarterback exists in. Any quarterback that would be playing for the San Francisco 49ers right now would be game managing. You could put Cam Newton there. He would be managing the game. You could put um, Joe Burrow there. He would be managing the game. Any quarterback in that situation would be managing the game because they have one of the best defenses in the NFL and they're loaded with offensive weapons. That is a team that is better when a disproportionate amount of their attention isn't going just to one player or one position. It's when they can spread the ball out to Brandon Ayuk and let him take over the game or Debo Samuel and let him take over the game or Christian McCaffrey and let him take over the game. That is the beauty of the San Francisco 49ers is that they have a complete unit. A game changer, game manager exists on a spectrum, not a binary. It's not either or. You exist on a spectrum as a quarterback. And you want your quarterback to be able to go up and down that spectrum smoothly, right? If you need your quarterback to game manage to win a game, you want him to be able to do that smoothly. If you need your quarterback to play make to win a game, you want him to be able to do that smoothly. What you don't want is somebody who's too rigid in one side of this, right? Kirk Cousins is an example of somebody who's a little bit too married to game management, right? Where he wants to manage the game so much, he wants to be so naturally conservative with his passes at times that he won't take a risk when a risk is necessary. And that's how you end up with fourth and 10 and he throws a check down to the running back eight yards behind the sticks. Or you get something like Carson Wentz. I'm, I, I wanted to get spicy and say Josh Allen, but I ain't going to do it to him. But a lot of y'all going to use Josh Allen, right? But Carson Wentz, when Baker Mayfield was here in Cleveland, this was one of my big criticisms about him. They were a little bit too married to trying to be a game changer, right? They were willing to risk the ball too much to make a big play. They were willing to allow for turnover opportunities to happen when a team really just required you to just manage what was going on, right? That would have been the best option for the team. Take care of the football. Don't give their offense too many chances. Make sure your defense doesn't get tired. Get quality possessions. Win the time of possession battle. And you're good. And that's what you need the quarterback to do. So let's bring this whole conversation back to the debate about Deshaun Watson. Let's play the clip again, just so we can be refreshed. Like, I don't need to try to get a lead, even though it's zero, zero. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can take these little things, these little, little dinks and dunks and then trickle the, the ball down the field where I'm being a game manager. I'm not trying to be a game changer and, and be the, the superstar that people know I am, I don't need that right now. And I think that that's where I got to continue to tell myself and preach to myself that I need to do that each and every week, not just against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, the initial response to this was, we're paying $230 million and we are not paying $230 million for a game manager. But I think that comment, and honestly, a lot of comments about the quarterback position I see, miss the point of the quarterback position. The quarterback position has to be whatever is necessary for the team to win a game. That's why it's so important. And very often when you have a situation like the Cleveland Browns, you don't need the quarterback position 
to be going crazy <laughs> in order to win football games. And again, if you don't believe me, literally like go back and look at what happened last year. Browns went 11 and five with five different quarterbacks and PJ Walker wasn't throwing the, throwing out the lights in, in those starts and neither was DTR. And while Joe Flacco came in there and did put up good numbers, he also threw a ton of interceptions in those starts. So it's not like there was at any point where the Browns are getting like 300 yards, four touchdowns, no interception from the quarterback position. Like they weren't getting elite level quarterback play, but they were able to beat teams that did have elite level quarterback play because they were able to rely on what they had around them. And that's what I thought was the beauty of what Deshaun Watson did demonstrate in his, what, five starts, five true starts. I know people like to add that uh, Indianapolis game in there because he won it, but he was four and one this year. Stop saying he was five and one. He was four and one. Um, but in those five starts, I saw four games where the Browns won, where Deshaun Watson did exactly what he needed to do. He managed the game well. He made plays when plays needed to be made, right? When it was time to put the game out of hand and you needed a touchdown drive, Deshaun Watson delivered that in the Cincinnati game. He delivered that in the Tennessee game. He delivered that in the Arizona game. And he delivered that in the Baltimore game. So when it was time for him to be a game changer and make a game changer-esque play, Deshaun Watson was able to deliver and do that. But for the bulk of those games, the stats aren't crazy because he was really doing a good job of just managing the game because he knew that the defense would be able to win this game if he just didn't make that many mistakes. And that's good quarterback play. Whether you deem it as a game changer or a game manager, the number one job of a quarterback is to understand what kind of team they are on and to understand what the team needs from them to be successful. In 2020, Deshaun Watson threw for 5,000 yards almost because that's what the Houston Texans needed in order to be successful. But he didn't put up those crazy numbers in 2019 where I thought he had his best season where he was doing exactly what Houston was asking him to do. See, Quarterback position is not about wins exclusively. It's not about stats exclusively. It's not about your QBR or your PFF grade or or your ELO rating or your 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 whatever, whatever number that people want to make this about exclusively. Quarterback play is not. It's about can you provide to the team exactly what they need from the position in order to be successful. If you look at Tom Brady, there are years where he goes off because the team needed him to go off. And there are other years where he just kind of quietly managed the game in the background because that's what the team needed because they had strong enough defenses. There is no shame in doing either of those two things. And what I got from the quotes in this video was something that was more encouraging and honestly the most encouraging thing that I've heard from Deshaun Watson's mouth since he has joined Cleveland is that he might actually understand that dynamic of the quarterback position because sometimes you get guys in here who don't, who think that it's always up to them to manage, to, to be a game changer in a way and they put the ball at risk too much and it's, it's a mess. And honestly, it worried me that Deshaun didn't understand this because watching him play, especially that first season back um, as a Cleveland Brown, really made me worry because it seemed like with every throw, I would say like his first eight weeks in Cleveland. So including the first, well, Cincinnati game, the weather really, you couldn't tell if that's what he wanted to do. He was forced into managing the game. But that second week in Pittsburgh, right? So those eight weeks, you could see a player who is trying to justify a trade with every throw, who's trying to justify a contract with every throw. And I think that really messed up the dynamic of what that team needed to be successful. If he's able to humble himself this year and understand, hey, this team doesn't need me to throw for 5,000 yards. This team doesn't need me to have a career high in touchdown passes. What this team needs is somebody to take care of the ball, manage the game, and then every once in a while, like the Baltimore game, I'm going to have to turn up and be a game changer. He's going to have to do that. But it's not going to be, we need you to be that dude for four quarters. And if he can understand that and do that, I think the Browns are at a better place. But that's my whole thing about this game changer, game manager argument. I hate how people have it. I understand why. People do it, 
<laughs> but I hate it. <laughs> I hate the conversation because I think there are so many more interesting conversations to have about the quarterback than we, is he a game manager and how much is a game manager worth? Once we understand that quarterback play and game manager and game changer exists more on a spectrum than a binary, right? It's not one or the other. There are There's a range of play that goes in between that. And most quarterbacks have to slide up and down that spectrum in order to win a Super Bowl. It's not just, oh, I'm a game changer my way all the way to it. And honestly, the ones that are really good and don't get to the Super Bowl are the ones that never understand that they have to slide up and down that spectrum. So to me, this is a encouraging development for Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section below. 